defined, wine is the fermented juice of freshly gathered grapes. All that is needed to turn grape juice into wine is the simple, entirely natural process of fermentation. Fermentation is the chemical change of sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide gas brought about by yeasts, the microorganisms which are found on the grape skins. As the grape pulp contains about 30% of sugar, once the skin is broken, the natural activity of the yeast and sugar ferments and straight away there is wine. Under normal conditions, the yeast will go on working until all the sugar in the grapes is converted into alcohol or until the alcohol level in the wine reaches about 15% of the volume. Left to nature, almost all wine would be dry. It is possible to stop fermentation before all the sugar is used up, either by adding alcohol to raise the level up to 15%, or by adding sulfur, both of which anesthetize the yeast, or by filtering the wine through a very fine filter to take out the yeast. These are methods that are used to make sweet wine. One wine differs from another, primarily because of differences in the raw materials but variations in the fermentation process can produce all the other differences between red, white, rosé, sweet, dry or sparkling wine. In order to understand the process of wine production, let us refer to our year of the vineyard and to the months of September and October, the period of the vintage. The freshly picked grapes are placed into containers and transported to the winery. In the case of white wine, the grapes are fed into a crusher and stemmer, which tears off the stalks and pumps the broken grapes into a horizontal press. The press revolves and large plates gradually crush the grapes, leaving the skins, known as mark, while the must, the fresh juice, falls into a trough from which it is pumped into a fermenting vat. At this stage, there are several options open to determine the style of the wine. It may be made into sweet wine by having its fermentation stopped while it contains sugar, or bottled before fermentation is finished to make sparkling wine. If dry wine is required, the juice may be left to ferment until all its sugar is used up. The dry wine could even be distilled to make brandy. In the case of red wine, the grapes are crushed and pumped into a vat where they ferment with their skins. Traditionally, the stalks went in too, but they are usually removed today. The wine will gradually draw out the colour and tannin from the skin. Fermentation is allowed to go on until all the sugar is gone. This could be up to 14 days when the free wine is run off. For lighter, quicker maturing wine, the modern practice is to take the wine off the skins after a few days to finish fermenting separately. The remaining skins are pressed in a hydraulic press which forces further juice out. This is mixed with the free run wine or used to top up the wine in the cask. The mark, left in the press, is used as fertiliser or distilled to make cheap brandy. To achieve rosé, red grapes are fed through a crusher and straight into a vat, complete with their skins, to begin fermentation. The juice for rosé wine takes a light pink colour from the skins, but almost immediately it is run off into another vat to ferment without them. Normally, it is allowed to finish fermentation naturally, and is therefore completely dry. The process used to produce port or fortified wines is based on the red wine procedure. However, the juice is allowed to ferment until half its sugar is converted into alcohol. It is then mixed with brandy to raise the alcohol level above 15%, stunning the yeast and halting the fermentation process, resulting in a wine that is both strong and sweet Today, with modern knowledge, the winemaker no longer merely watches the process of wine production, he controls it.
technology can allow one man to operate a whole winery at vintage time simply by pressing buttons. But no machinery, no matter how modern, can replace the winemaker's decisions on when to pick the harvest, when to decide the correct balance of sugar and acids in a crop, and above all, to judge the hazards of the weather. To buy wine and get exactly what you expect is the exception rather than the rule. There are few cardinal rules in such an open field where you can buy from a corner store, supermarket, by mail order or from the producer. But the first rule is absolute. Always buy ahead of your need. This gives you time to think, to buy wine which is appropriate to your needs. Plus, given time, you can make an order that qualifies for a discount. Buying by the case is cheaper than buying by the bottle. Your seller should follow no set pattern, but be a reflection of your own preferences and your pace of life, which at the end of the day means how much you can afford to spend on wine. In order to know which wines to purchase, a little understanding of the wine label can tell you a great deal about the wine you intend to buy. Wine labels can indicate a bargain when the information it shows suggests a good wine at a reasonable price. To guide us, we can read off from the wine label the wine's history. On a typical French wine label, we can derive the name of the property which produced the wine, the country of origin and district or region, followed by its quality status. In France, there are basically four categories of wine. Appellation Contrôlée. AC is the highest appellation for quality wines. All aspects of viticulture and vinification are strictly controlled. Vin de limité de qualité supérieure, VDQS. These are wines of good quality, but not up to the AC standard. Vin de paix are wines from specified geographical origins with some control of grape varieties and alcohol levels. Vin de table. This is the basic table wine. If the words Maison, Bouté or Château appear on the label, this is a guarantee that the producer has bottled the wine himself. The vintage of the wine is the year in which it was produced and is duly displayed on the wine label. The name and address of the proprietors and the merchant for whom the wine was bottled will often be shown in addition to the volume of wine and alcohol content of wine within the bottle. Much of the information on a German wine label is a reflection of the French labels. It will display the wine region, vintage, vineyard, village name, the grape variety and its quality category. There are five categories of wine, separated into either quality wine or table wine. The strictly controlled superior wines, which come under the QMP title, this is the abbreviation of Qualitätswein mit Pratikat, are broken down into six categories, which start with Cabernet, and in ascending order of sweetness, there are Spätlaser, Auslaser, Birnauslaser, Trockenbirnauslaser, and ice vine. In descending order, the four other quality categories are Qualitätswein Best Impter und Baugebieter, QBA, quality wine produced in a specific region. Landwein, a superior table wine. Deutsche Tafelwein, table wine made using 100% German grapes. Tafelwein, table wine which may contain wine from other EC countries. For Italian wine, the quality categories are Denominazione di origine controllata, DOC, wines made from specified grape varieties grown in delimited areas and made following set methods. Denominazione di origine controllata e garantina, DOCG, the premier quality class. These are wines of particular esteem that have been promoted to this top level of DOC. Vini Tepici, the Italian equivalent of the French Vin de Paix. Vino da Tavola, Indicazione Geografica, 
table wine from designated areas. Vino da tavola, table wine. Armed with a little knowledge, the next consideration is the drinking age of the wine you wish to purchase. Will you want to simply buy your wine to drink young, or will you want to lay down wines for a special occasion, or maybe as an investment? The ideal cellar is one which spans the various wine life cycles. One which will have drink up wines like Beaujolais, brand name table wines, Muscadet, and German wines below qualitätsfine level. The one to two year wines categorize a large majority of both red and white wines, whose character and value increase rapidly in the years immediately after bottling. Some examples are Champagne, Chablis, Sancerre, German Qualitätswein, regular quality Chardonnays, Bordeaux and Bourgogne Rouge, Midi and Provence Reds. It is a question of degree as to which wines fall into the two to five year group. Degree above all quality. The best examples of wines in this group often only begin to flourish after two or more years in the bottle. And put on real style towards and sometimes beyond the fifth year. Examples are Cru Bourgeois Bordeaux and their equivalents from other regions in good vintages: Cahors, Madeira, and the midweight reds. Chianti, Reserves, and Chilean Cabernets are good at five years or so. All the best white Burgundies and other Chardonnays belong in this category, along with the majority of high-quality Rhone. Alsace and Bordeaux whites, German and Austrian cabernets, Spätlesers, Auslesers, and many Sauternes, but not the best. For long-term wines, only exceptional white wines call for maturing beyond five years. They are the highest qualities of white Burgundy in vintages of exceptional balance. Their equivalents from Germany, perfect Spätlesers and Auslesers. And the world's greatest sweet wines, like the best Sauterne and Barsacs, German beer and Auslesers, Trocken beer and Auslesers, Ice wines, and certain vintages of the Hungarian Tokai. The world's finest reds come into this category. Their high natural tannin content often needs a minimum of ten and preferably twenty years to combine with their pigments in the still mysterious process of bottle maturation. Good classed growth Bordeaux of successful vintages are the slowest of natural wines to resolve themselves. Good Burgundies also have as much to gain by ten or more years in the bottle. Other long-term wines are the best Rhone Reds, above all Hermitage, Barolo, and Barbaresco from Piedmont. Certain rare Rioja Grand Reserves and Vega Sicilia from Spain and Barca Velha from Portugal. The best Cabernet Sauvignon of California, and some exceptional Australian Reds. The longest-term wine of all is vintage Port. Few vintages and no great ones begin to be exciting before 15 years have passed. Great vintages are still young at 25 years. Consideration of storage is paramount to a collector of wine, even if you only intend to purchase wine to be drunk relatively young. Security, darkness, temperature, and humidity are the four factors to consider when storing wine. The storage area should be strong, permanent, and pilfer-proof. It should be dark. Light, especially its ultraviolet component. Penetrates even dark green bottle glass quite easily. A bottle of wine exposed in a window or under the lights of a store for a mere few weeks will suffer chemical changes. Wine should be stored at a constant temperature, whether as low as 40 degrees Fahrenheit or as high as 70 degrees Fahrenheit is probably not important in the short or medium term. Although the lower the temperature, the slower the rate of biochemical change. Whether for improvement or deterioration, the two enemies of wine are excessively high temperatures and rapid or extreme fluctuations repeated over a significant period of time. Humidity is the friend of wine, 
that the enemy of wine labels and cartons. A cellar can scarcely be too damp for a beer bottle. In a dry cellar, the cork must be lie on the wine at one end to keep it moist and tight fitting. In a damp cellar, the whole cork is evenly saturated. However, in a damp cellar, wine labels age instantly; they become unreadable and fall off. Unless your cellar records are perfect, you may lose the identity of the wine. A useful tip to prevent this is to coat the label with varnish or a squirt of hair lacquer. Very few of us will have the opportunity to own a large cavernous cellar, but surprisingly, in most homes, it is possible to find a secure, dark area which maintains a constant temperature. The obvious choice is the area under the stairs. Alternatively, an unused larder or cupboard, or simply a small wine rack set aside in the coolest room, away from the light. It is essential to store all wine horizontally. Even if you only intend to keep it for a month or two, having dedicated an area for wine storage, a useful method of locating the wine you have purchased easily and quickly is to use a simple letter numbering system. By lettering the vertical ranks of your wine rack and numbering the horizontal ranks, an entry into a cellar book of a wine bottle can be recorded as a combination of letter and number. For example, C three. Or E six. The cellar book is not only a location record of your wines, but is a unique history book of your cellar. As wines have been consumed, tasting notes and observations are also noted.